Welcome to Rock Solid Radio. I am Linda Hutchinson, the director of Rock Solid Families, and I am here with a special guest, and it is not my husband. So if you're used to watching with Merle, um, I'm sorry, he'll be back next week, I promise. But um, I have a very special guest, and her name is Monica Quintanilla. Yes. Yeah. Hello. Thank you, Monica, for coming. Thanks for you're having lot, me. You're a lot cuter than Merle. <laughs> A lot younger and cuter. So it's Girls' Day yes, at Rock is. Solid Radio. So, you know, it was funny. I was working out um, just the other day with some ladies, and it was all ladies. All our yeah. guys were not there. It was awesome. Yeah, I know it. We called it Female Friday. That's right. And then Merle walked in the door, and the girls <laughs> literally were like, out, get out. It's Girls' Day. I ruined it. I know. So, hey, before we get started and why Monica's here, um, I don't think she's just here to chat with me just because it's, she does nothing better to do. <laughs> but we're going to first thank our sponsors who are so um, helpful in getting this message out to our community. So we want to thank Casey's Outdoor Solutions and Maxwell Construction for coming alongside Rock Solid Radio and Rock Solid Families and just helping us with these messages to families and couples and individuals. So, yeah. You know, we are thankful for that. But we also want to mention a few um, things that are coming up. One is our marriage retreat. Yeah. You're not married, Monica, not so married. you can't come. Yeah. But I'm if an, you were... <laughs> I would be missing out. I yes, know I would. <laughs> you'd be missing out. Merle and I are going to be helping to lead a retreat on November 5th and 6th. And it's going to be at the Mason Hilton Garden Inn. And everyone is welcome. And this, if you're listening to this podcast the week it airs, then the deadline is October 15th of 2021. And so we'd love to have you join us. Um, you would need to go through um, Bright Christian Church. That's their website, Bright Christian, um, brightcc.org, and just hit the event tab, and then there will be ways to register there. So we would love for you to join us. It's going to be yeah. a great night. So when you get a significant other, <laughs> right. then you come back, and <laughs> I will. I will be there. There you go. I don't. I wish I was married so I could go to it. There you it. go. <laughs> also, um, we have a beginner class. You know, working out, Monica. You need to come and work out, and I'll come you know, work out with you. Yes. Seriously. And so um, there's a beginner class that is helpful for people who have maybe never done the exercise of finishing, which is what Merle invented ten years ago, actually. Awesome. And we teach classes six days a week, and so we would love for you to come. It's Tuesday and Thursdays at 7 p.m. in our office in West Harrison, Indiana. So, um, you know, fitness and marriage, what else do you need? You right. know? <laughs> but hey, that's not why you're here, because neither one of those are the things that, you know, yeah. uh, are why you're here today, Monica. So tell me a little bit about Monica Quintanella, <sighs> which, well. by the way, where's that name come from anyway? <laughs> I am not made in the USA. I you're was... <laughs> not made in the USA? <laughs> you know how like a lot of the stuff, like, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Okay. that's what I was going with. Um, I was born and raised in Nicaragua, as it is in Central America, um, until I was five. Then we moved to the United States through missionaries that wow. came through a church here in Harrison. And, um, well, not here because this is Indiana, but Harrison. <laughs> Just across the road. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> and um, that's where that originates from. Wow. So yeah. your family is from Nicaragua. I can't even say it. <laughs> Nicaragua. Oh, my Nicaragua. gosh. Nicaragua. <laughs> Nicaragua. And so you yeah. came here at the age of five. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so tell me a little bit about your family. Um, we are, there's three of us, three, three kids. I have two brothers. I am the middle child Aww. and we're all two years apart. So it's actually really cute. And then, so um, it's boy, girl, boy, right? Yes. Okay. Yep. And, um, yeah, I have a mom and a dad. They are divorced, remarried. Um, but both of them. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, I come from a very Christian home, very disciplined. My dad was a pastor. Mm -hmm. Um, so that is where, yeah. that's where just my childhood. So where did you grow up? I grew up. So when I came here to the United States, I lived in Harrison for a while. Okay. And Harrison, then, Ohio. Yep. And then, um, I moved to Miami town and that's where I've been okay. for a few years now. Okay. Yes. So you're a kind of a local girl. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. If you live, if you're, if you're watching from, you know, the tri-state, totally. Cincinnati tri-state area, maybe you're not. Um, we have, by the way, viewers and listeners from all over the world. That's not, awesome. I'm not really sure if people that are in India are, awesome. are able to understand what we're saying <laughs> or, you know, I mean, it's just amazing. Spain and, that's and amazing. Um, 
crazy, crazy. But, you know, if you're living in the Cincinnati tri-state area, Monica's a local girl. Yes. But let's talk. So you're 21. Yes. Right? Yes. And so let's go back a little bit, Monica, to teenage Monica. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Are you <laughs> sure there's enough time, though? <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> Hang on. Yeah. Uh, it's, okay. It's a, it was a struggle yeah? being why, a why? teenage girl. Um, I dealt with a lot of um, rejection. I dealt with a lot of um, anger, bitterness, um, just unforgiveness and hatred in my heart. Why, where do you think that came from? Um, so starting my freshman year of high school, um, my parents got a divorce. Okay. And so I think that was just a really crucial time anyways to like need a, pre- like a father mm. figure in your life because high school just isn't the, for me <laughs> personally, wasn't the best experience. Let's face it. High school's tough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so going into that and dealing with like, so like, social statuses in you know high school Mm. and then gossip and then boys and then that all just comes into play especially as you're growing as a woman you have you know hormones and you have different elements that just make us a woman Mm -hmm. see that's why we had merle not here today because we're talking about hormones (laughs) yeah (laughs) exactly (laughs) sorry honey (laughs) (laughs) so like that's that's a huge part and like for sure being becoming older and growing as a woman is um all that stuff yeah. being and trying to make your way. So yeah. were you involved in any like sports or clubs or anything in, in high school? Okay, so my wrestling fans, if you <laughs> like wrestling, I'm your girl. Were you a wrestler? No, I was okay. a wrestling statistician. Oh goodness. just to clarify. Thank God. <laughs> but would... if I could have wrestled, I would have. <laughs> oh man. See, I I was I Oh yeah. So I, I grew up with not grew up. I my sons were wrestlers. Yeah. And I'll never forget the first time we went to a wrestling match <laughs> and my son was just a first grader and I'm at a high school varsity wrestling <laughs> match. Okay. You know where I'm going with this. I know where you're going. And these men, these are men. Yes. They're they're in these really tight tights. Yes. And they are like got their bodies contortioned yeah. all over and like <laughs> men's rear ends are in other men's faces. And I'm like, this is weird. This is something's not right about oh, this. Oh my gosh. But honestly, Honestly, like I would sit in because my oldest brother was a wrestler. I come from like a lineage of like wrestlers. Okay. So that's where I think my fascination comes from. Gotcha. But I would sit in some of their practices and man, like they do like gymnastic things to keep their body flexible because of how they move. Yeah. It's great. Like props, kudos. Oh yeah. I mean, some (laughs) of the, and so our, we have three out of the four sons who have been wrestlers and the two older ones, like they would have their legs like behind their head and like contortion, like yes, hurt, you're hurting my son. You know, like that (laughs) that doesn't look normal. Yeah. But yeah, wrestling is an amazing sport. So you were a wrestling statistician. Yes. So that was kind of your jam. Yes. That was my jam. Okay. I really enjoyed it. That's if cool. I would go, could go back to high school, that would be like the one thing that I would still do. Yes, 100%. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so, what changed in you? I'm hearing that you were feeling abandoned, mm-hmm. very angry about mm-hmm. your parents' divorce mm-hmm. and rejection mm-hmm. just from that whole family dynamic. Yeah. And you seem to kind of take it out on everybody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You were an angry an angry teen. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And and you kind of described the fact that you kind of had an attitude. Oh, yeah. And I kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if I were someone else, like if I were me, I would walk completely opposite way if I saw myself coming. Were you the kind of girl that would like turn her nose up and roll her eyes at people oh and just kind of look down at them yes. for just like how they were dressed or what? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I was very judgmental. <sighs> okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, that that kind of that kind of sums up, you know, majority of teenage girls today. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. Seriously. A lot of them have a little bit of an attitude and yeah. a little bit of a judgment issue. So yeah. tell me a little bit about how long that lasted for you and when did it change? Okay. What, what changed it? So I was like this. Um throughout my entire high school experience from a freshman wow. to a, um, what's, what's the, what's 12th grade? Senior. Senior. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I totally forgot. <laughs> yeah. From freshman to senior and mm. actually two years after I graduated until I was 20, I was the same person. Wow. Like I didn't, I didn't really want to change. That was mm. my thing. So like I would go through, um, just, around people and I would just be very 
very angry very, all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And so you're all through high school. You're just yep. an angry, bitter, judgmental yep. teen. Yeah. Even out of high school, yep. your 18th, 19th year, you're still kind of mm-hmm. just running wild. Yep. Kind of. And I'm guessing that you were doing some things that probably weren't the healthiest for you. Oh, yeah. 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 I would. Um, I smoked weed all the time. There was not a like I would want to change and be like, no, I'm going to quit. I'm just going to quit. And I would quit for like a few hours mm. and I would just go back into it because wow. I, why? why I guess I felt like I needed I don't, not I guess I know that I, I needed to feel um relaxed or calm or mm. like it could fulfill something mm. that was a, a deep internal thing yeah. you know what I mean it wasn't just a surface level oh I just want to feel good mm-hmm. it was completely deteriorating and it added on to more of what I was feeling. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, Monica, that is such a huge point there because mm. a lot of our teens think that I just smoke weed because I, I think it's fun. Yeah. It makes me feel good. Yeah. I, it relaxes me. Yeah. But if we really look down deep, mm-hmm. it's masking something deeper. A hundred percent. It's masking something that is hurting inside them. Yes. And they're not willing to do the surgery. Yep. You know, it's kind of like I, I always compare it to a splinter. Mm-hmm. If you got a splinter in your like hand or your finger or something and you went and got a little needle, my kids would mm-hmm. be like, no, <laughs> don't take the needle. You know, like they did not want to be, you know, hurt with yeah. that. So they would rather keep the splinter mm-hmm. in the skin, underneath the skin. Mm-hmm. And what happens to a splinter if you don't get it out right away? It gets infected. It gets infected. Yeah, that's good. And yeah. and it hurts and it mm-hmm. starts getting pussy and yes. it starts to even make it worse. Yeah. And and that's kind of what happens when you don't deal with the pain yes. of your parents' divorce and get some help yeah. in a healthy way. We start acting out in this anger and this bitterness and yeah. this judgmental attitude that really is masking yeah. the pain you were feeling. Yes. A hundred percent. And even as a even in, as a freshman, like my I start, first started smoking my freshman year. Wow. I was 15 years old. No one really like understands the, like the depth of that, but that is like, mm-hmm. that's young. Yeah. That is a baby it's, if you really think about it. It's coming even younger now. Yeah. And it's scary. Yeah. It's and, the, scary. and the world just makes it okay. I yeah. think that's the scariest part is that it's, it's acceptable yeah. and they don't really think like, okay, what's really going on? Yeah. They just encourage it. That's the bigger thing is yeah. what's really going on. Yeah. Why? Why is that something you mm-hmm. feel like you need to do? Yeah. Yeah. And so tell me a little bit about what made a change. What um, clicked for you? I just, I just knew from just my personality and who I am. I love people, but I didn't love people at the time. But I knew that I loved being around. Like if I, when I had friends, I loved being around them. I loved making them laugh. I mm. loved giving them advice. Though I wouldn't take it, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I refused. But I would give them advice and I would love them. And But I never, I never received that for myself. Mm. So I knew that there was more for me. I knew that God did not give me this personality and this you know, every, for a reason, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know. So my pastor invited me to a Bible study in August of last year. And after that invitation, my life changed. I was prayed for and um, there was two women that worked in a prophetic gift and that just really like the Lord really spoke through them. Mm. And it really encourages me. It really encouraged me and it made me want to push even harder to be like, wow. I know that there's more. I know that I'm more wow. than what the world's telling me that yeah. I am. Yeah, because you were settling. You were settling yeah. for mm-hmm. what the world says will make you happy yes. or that will take away the pain. Yeah. And so by an invitation of mm-hmm. somebody mm-hmm. surrounding yourself with healthy people, yeah positive people, people who encouraged you, people that believed in you, maybe even before you believed in yourself. Yes. That changed your life. It did. It really did. And let me just say prior to this, there was, there's so many like, like opinions that come into how a woman should be. Mm. And it's, there's books on how to become like a bee, like how, mm-hmm. or like, and I'm like, what is this? Like, yeah. it's so encouraged to oh, be yeah. toxic as oh, a yeah. woman. It's oh, like, yeah. burn your bra, grow your armpit hair out, like kind of hear me roar kind of kind of woman. And I'm like, wait, wait, wait. That's another reason why Merle's not here today. <laughs> like, but we real, but as a woman, we are, wow. we are so yeah. much more than that. Like if you mm-hmm. look in the Bible, all of it, we, we are helpers. We are go-getters. We are yeah. the spirit of the home. So yeah. I was always told like, oh, you have to be a bad bee and like, uh, you know, and I'm, and then 
that's that's completely what the word of God says. Completely uh, against what the world so, says. So yeah. yeah, and so like even now, everything is so encouraged to be a feminist. And I love I love all types of women. Like I I you know women are awesome. I encourage women in a healthy like yes in a, in a healthy way yes you know so yeah you don't have to be an angry yeah. witchy yeah. nasty yeah. girl yeah to be a strong independent woman yes and that's what i love monica as we've been able to work together and just see that god is really transforming your life into something that he created you to be thank you that he's yeah. taking those gifts and those talents and that personality that big personality <laughs> if you haven't noticed already he's got a big personality <laughs> that really god wants to use but as we as you were learning and growing there was a humbling period for you yes. that was really probably a lesson that you had to learn the hard way yes because you were kind of <laughs> you're kind of dancing on the edge yeah. and, and kind of you know playing both sides of yeah. Christianity there for yeah. a little bit. Yeah. And um, let me just say, that's not biblical. You can't, ha- <laughs> you can't serve two, ma- two masters. Yeah. Okay. So um, I was trying to serve both and I couldn't, mm. you know, the Lord says pick one. And so I went through a period where um, I was baptized in August and I was doing good for a while. Then January hits. That's when my my birthday is, and I turn twenty one. Woo! Oh, we all know. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to say woo to that oh, one. <laughs> yeah. And so I um I started drinking. I would go out and go to the bars, and it's crazy that sometimes I would be even be in my Bible study, and I'd be like, mm. "What am I going to go drink tonight?" You know, mm. and that, that's just so evil. But that's what the devil does. He comes to t- to steal, to kill, and to destroy, mm. and I feel like sometimes we take that so lightly. No, do Mm. not take that lightly because I thought that I was, I was baptized. I was born again. And here he comes deceiving me and making it and manipulating our minds. And that's our biggest problem. So I was just thinking like, Hey, yeah, but you know, we're not here to say the, if you're, of age, you can't have a drink. Yes, yeah, right. But for you, it went too far. Yes, every time I drank, it went too far. So I know that for myself. Yeah, that I I can't drink. That I it's just I don't have that self control when it comes to that. Mm. So I stay away from so it. So for you, it's an all or none. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me how the Lord got your attention on that one. <laughs> how did he How did he teach you that lesson, Monica? Because oh, I think he kind of learned this the hard way. Oh, I did. Oh, I did. Mm. So I ended up getting a DUI back in February of mm. this year. And um, I totaled my car completely. Wow. Airbags and all. Um, You're so lucky to be here, girl. Yeah. So I, lucky. I saw honestly, a picture of that car. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> By God's grace, I was here. And um, I'm still here. And I broke two bones on my toes. Mm. And b- literally, by God's grace, that's all that was broken. I yeah. wasn't really um i didn't have any scratches or anything i definitely had bruises all over my body or Mm. like how hard it hit yeah like the seat belt down here i literally like got air (laughs) like Mm. so it caught me and i had like you know bruises all around my body so praise god that you're here amen Amen. but it definitely kind of woke you up to yeah i can't i can't continue to play this game Mm -hmm. i've got to get serious about yeah what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. So where are you at now? What are you doing? Uh, what, what is Monica, where's Monica want to go in her life? Tell oh, me a little so bit. exciting. Um, so right now I am starting a new job come Monday and that's in childcare. Mm. Um, my heart has always been with children, with young adults, um, teenagers. I just feel like I, I can relate to them cause I've, mm-hmm. I've been through that struggle. It's hard. And, um, I am currently in school for Christian caregiving and counseling, and um, eventually I want to open up my own counseling um, company and have like a Christian-based counseling center for anybody. But I feel like my heart really like Mm. leans towards like women and and young girls because I've been there. You know, I can relate to that, that, that hurt. And, and as a matter of fact, you're doing some training to yes. start with uh, an agency that does some peer counseling for women. Yes. Yeah. And you know, Monica, I, I asked you to come on the podcast. You didn't like go, hey, you need to have me on. <laughs> you were like, what? You want me? And here's why. You know, I'm going to give this as homework mm. to some teens and some parents and yeah. some some of my clients who are heading down that 
Mm. train wreck Mm -hmm. that you literally that wall I mean you hit a retaining wall yes I did yeah (laughs) and and I'm just here I want you to hear Monica's story and to learn before you have to learn the hard way right I mean Monica literally hit a wall Mm -hmm. physically emotionally and spiritually yeah where she had to come to the understanding of okay I can keep going down this destructive path Mm-hmm. And it's not going to get me where I want to go. Right. Or I can make changes in myself. Yeah, yeah. Not being the victim of my parents' divorce. Right. Not sitting in my anger and my bitterness for right. the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. Smoking weed, yep. drinking beer, and yeah. just, you know, thinking it's everybody else's fault that yeah. you're not doing what you want to do. Right. Right. That's so true. Or yes. you can take the bull by the horns, mm-hmm. make some hard changes, mm-hmm. be honest and real. Yes. I mean, I asked you if we could talk about that, that whole wreck, because... That, that's a very vulnerable thing. Mm. It's not, mm-hmm. That's something you're proud of. Right. You know, but that's part of your story. It sure is. <laughs> and God's going to use it yeah. as, as a help to other teens and young adults. And, yes. and I know that God is going to use it in a mighty way. So, mm. so okay, let me ask you this. Okay. Um, we got teenage girls out there and, you know, a lot of them are watching because they have to. Yes. And, and I'm, I'm going to ask you this. What would you say to them? teenage girls out there that may be listening and watching and thinking that, hey, that's my story. Yeah. I'm heading down a, a path to nowhere yeah. and hitting a wall. You yeah. know, what, what would you say to them? Um, it's really easy to play the blame game. Mm-hmm. It's very easy to get caught up and you need to do this. You need to do that. So well, he did this and she mm-hmm. did that. But it's you. Mm-hmm. I was a problem. I had to acknowledge that I was a problem. If you don't realize you're the problem, everything's going to stay the same. Mm. Everything's going to stay stagnant. And it's and it's hard. It's hard to be like, gosh, I'm the problem. Because no mm. one wants that. No, no one wants to go into seeking help and like oh, having that person see that brokenness mm-hmm. in you. Having that person see that you yeah. you have to be vulnerable. And it and as women, I think we're, we're kind of taught, especially in this day and age, don't be vulnerable. You know, mm-hmm. be that bad girl. And it's it's not it's not that. You're not going to grow in a mindset like that. Yeah. So that was my biggest thing. Yeah. So I would say take that ownership of yourself. Yeah. Hold yourself accountable because mm. as much as anybody else might want to hold yourself account hold you <laughs> accountable, you are you. Yeah. And no one can make a decision for you. Yeah. And that was my problem. Yeah. And know? and also, you know, I would say out there to those girls look deeper yeah why are you doing what you're doing why right. are that why are you hanging around the friends you're doing yeah why are you smoking weed why are you drinking and hiding it thinking that yeah. it makes you cool or it makes you strong or it relaxes yeah. you like what's really going on and right. i would say do the work like monica's done and that is getting help for the deeper emotions that brought her to that place mm-hmm. of anger and yeah. resentment and pain right yeah absolutely and you can't hold on to that unforgiveness mm-hmm. like if you if you walked around that playing this victim yeah. and blaming it on your parents and their divorce and yeah. feeling abandoned, then, you know, you're never going to heal. Mm-hmm. Never. And so God is the only one yes. that can turn your test into a testimony Amen. and your mess into a message yes. and the trial into a triumph. And he can turn a victim into victory. And that's what we're here to say that is available to you if you're yeah. willing to do the work. Yes. So talk to me about the parents that might be listening. Okay. Okay. What is it that you would want them to hear about your story and about how they can help their girls, their okay. their teenagers, maybe boys mm-hmm. that maybe are really rebelling and, and really copping this angry attitude, this rebellious spirit in their home? What would uh, you say to them? I would really encourage to... Um, Really like don't like pr- take everything that they say personal because it's coming mm. through a through pain. Yeah, they're hurting, and if you just lash back out at them, or mm. and not just you, just anybody lashes out at a person that's hurting, they're just gonna feel even more hurt, and they're gonna keep lashing mm-hmm. out. You kind of almost have to understand how this person learns mm. to kind of approach them in the way where they are able to listen. Yeah, because I know it, just my parents, they would come very like you and very mm. crazy. And then I, with my personality, need my <laughs> anger and my bitterness. I'm like, wait a minute. Ah! Bring it on. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it just, then it would just be 
even an, an even yeah. bigger mess. Hurting people hurt people. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And so she's hurting. And so the last thing she needs is someone to yell back mm-hmm. at her. But mm-hmm. in the same token, and we talked about this, Monica, is yeah. that you don't want to lay down and play dead and be their friend and let absolutely them do whatever they not. want either. Yeah. yeah. Right. You got to have limits. Mm hmm. You still have to have boundaries. Yes. You still have to be the parent. Yes. Even when they are reaching, you know, lashing out at you Mm -hmm. or rejecting your rules or your opinions, Mm -hmm. you know, you still got to be the parent. Love them. Yeah. But love them with boundaries. Absolutely. That was, I think, the biggest thing Mm -hmm. for me. Yeah. That, that would have helped, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I, I pray that even though Monica is only 21 years old, maybe almost 22, you yeah. know, um, <laughs> there's something that can be learned in her story. She's an inspiration yeah. to me. I'm yeah. so thankful that how the God is just really transforming your life and Thank just you. really opening up doors yeah. and opening up your eyes to what he has for you. Yeah. That's exciting stuff. And so I can't contain it. <laughs> this is a little bit of a, a chronicle mark for us because I want to go back or go go forward and and reach out to Monica again in, in five, 10 years and see what God is doing yeah, in your life with amen. what's happened in the past and what you've been like in the past, but what God is going to do in the future. So yes. I'm excited about that. You amen. know, I love the verse out of uh, uh, Isaiah 29 that says that, you know, how foolish can we be that he is the potter, not us. Mm-hmm. He's greater than us. And, and why could we, the created thing, yeah. say, he didn't make me or, you know, he doesn't know what he's doing. Like, right. he's the potter, we're the clay. Right. He's God, we're not. We're not, absolutely. And so when we try to hide things in the dark, mm-hmm. when we try to do things around him or, you know, despite him, mm-hmm. he's not going to bless that. Absolutely. And so what you've seen recently in mm-hmm. your obedience to mm-hmm. the Lord, yeah. he's really blessed that. Amen. Yes. A hundred percent. And that's awesome. So, you know, again, we are so thankful for Monica sharing her story. And um, this can be you too. You know, yeah. God yeah. can take your mess and turn it into your message. Really? Regardless of how old you are, yeah. what you've been through, what yes. you've done, yes, his love is never and his grace is never too far away from Amen. you. Yeah. Amen. Is there anything, Monica, I don't want to put you on the spot, but is there anything that you wanted to say before we close? I, I know that we've talked a lot about, and I have thank you for being so vulnerable and honest and sharing your story, but is there anything else that you would, that we haven't talked about that you would want to end with? Um, just remember that you are fearfully and wonderfully Mm. made so really dig into that because you're fearfully made god made you so special that he was scared to to mess you up Mm. you have a purpose you have a a a, just an entire lifetime that the lord wants to use Mm. every step that you're going through right now it it's messy and it probably stinks but it's going to be used in a greater way if you are obedient to that it's hard but it's so worth it the Amen. pleasure, the just the pleasures of this world are nothing compared to like the glory and the riches that He has in store for mm. us. Amen. And Amen. so I just want, uh, even for myself, just remember that I have to remember that daily because yeah. the world is is run by mm. by not well. The enemy is yeah. is definitely lurking around. He's yeah. prowling around and he's looking for someone to devour. And Absolutely. as you mentioned before, that verse out of John ten, that the thief comes to steal, kill, mm-hmm. and destroy. Mm-hmm. And if he can destroy your life, if he can trick you into believing you're not worthy or if you can't right. be forgiven or what you've done is too big of a mess, right. then he is winning that lie. And, right. and we're just here to tell you that there is a greater one yes. than the one that is in the world. Amen. And his name is Jesus Christ. And Amen. he, his forgiveness is possible for you. Yes. And you may feel like you're learning the hard way and that you can't be forgiven, but you can. Yes. And that he can take all of that and bring it around for his glory. So Amen. please, please, if there's anything that we can do to help at Rock Solid Families. We just encourage you to call us at 812-576-7625. That's 812-576-ROCK. Or you can go to rocksolidfamilies.org. And I just want to say that there's help out there and there's hope available. Yes, absolutely. And Monica's story is a great reminder of that. So Monica, thank you so much for coming and just being vulnerable and real today. Thank you for having me. And I know that your story and your message is going to hit girls a lot better than me just because... (laughs) 
you've just been there. Mm-hmm. You know, you've mm-hmm. you're in that world right now yeah. where that's around you all the time. And yeah, you know, I'm an older girl that no, you know, you didn't, stop it. didn't deal with that <laughs> as much. But sure, you know, that that's tough. So as we close, we again want to thank our sponsors, Casey's Outdoor Solutions and Maxwell Construction for just their support of Rock Solid Radio. And, uh, you know, for all of us here at Rock Solid Families, we just want to thank you. So we just want to say have a great day. And yeah. uh, we, here we are building a stronger community, one family at a time. Make it a great day. Yes. Rock Solid Radio wants to thank Casey's Outdoor Solutions. Casey's is a premier garden center and gift shop located in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. They offer a wide selection of high quality plants, landscaping materials, and home decor. They do amazing high quality work and can help you transform your indoor and outdoor living spaces into something beautiful. So stop by Casey's Outdoor Solutions today and let them know you appreciate their support for Rock Solid Radio. Visit Casey's today at 21481 State Line Road, Lawrenceburg, Indiana. Rock Solid Radio wants to thank Maxwell Construction, who has been our sponsor since the very beginning. For over 30 years, Maxwell has delivered the highest quality projects by holding to their core values of customer satisfaction, positive attitude, respect, and excellence. So if you have any kind of commercial construction need, give Maxwell Construction a call today at 812-537-2200.